Now on this channel we mostly talk about designing games, you know, making your levels, creating your characters, getting that narrative down, utilizing the backtracking and all that good stuff. But today I figured we might talk a little bit more about something from the production side. Now hold up, don't click away from the video, I promise I'll try to make this as interesting and short as possible. But have you never wondered how you would actually measure the performance of your game? Let's say you've finished it, you released it, or you're in the QA process, and you want to measure how well it's doing towards the goals that you set as a company. Well, today we're going to be looking into KPIs, how to utilize them, how to set them, how to properly measure them. I'll give you a few examples that you can use for your own project or piece of work that you've been working on. And at the end, we're also going to touch up on some unconventional and maybe a bit different ways of measuring how well your game is performing, both with the playtesters and out there in the real world. Anyways, with that out of the way, grab your nearest tester, get ready to fill out some Google Sheets, and let's go. Now, first of all, I mentioned something called a KPI, or Key Performance Indicator. But what are these? Well, in general, there are metrics which are used in development of the various products, honestly, and providing you a measure of performance, not only of the capital that your company is earning, but also the performance of the company as a whole. In this context, and if utilized properly, they can help you show the progress towards any short-term or long-term goals that is set by your team or the company in question. And as far as software development goes, these are usually used to measure retention, installs, or just pure net income. Now when it comes to tracking these, the process of it varies greatly depending on whether these are aimed at the process of development, the product that's being developed, or the company performance as a general. Usually in the process of development, a responsible person or a small team will be appointed to measure progress and evaluate performance, and after release, this will be done either using a tracking tool such as game analytics, or various other sources that provide you information regarding the player base and the game statistics. But let's link it back to the game development now. In software and in general development as a whole, the main focus of KPIs should be on how the audience interacts with the provided product slash products, as well as how well the marketing did prior to the product's release. Now just to give a couple of examples and explain them to you, effective KPIs for game development can be for example the cost per acquisition or the CPA, which refers to the cost of acquiring a new customer who installs, downloads or uses the provided product based on the marketing campaign, with the simple way of interpreting it as cost per acquisition being equal to the cost of campaign divided by new installs. Another interesting metric could be the customer lifetime value, or the CLV, which is a prediction of the entire net income describing the full future relationship with the product and potential future customer. In that sense, using the already provided cost per acquisition we discussed, the simple way of interpreting this would be the net profit being equal to gross profit minus the cost of acquisition for the customers. Obviously many games in the MMO or multiplayer genre will track their monthly active users and daily active users, as well as the ratio in between also referred to as the sticky factor, which is the measurement of how many monthly active users can and are converted to daily active users. With these kinds of games, or especially mobile releases, you also often measure the retention rate or the churn rate, which are basically two ways of measuring the same thing from a different angle, and that's how many players of the game has retained over a period of time, or how many players a game has lost over a period of time. For other games, these can be something as average session length or game completions. The important thing to remember here is that with KPIs, those are set up by you, your team, or potentially your higher-ups, and designed to specifically track how well your product that you've been working on is performing. But to be fair, at the start I did promise that there are other ways of measuring how well your game is performing that isn't maybe as word-heavy or as math-heavy, if you will, and can still provide very unique and interesting feedback into how well your game is doing. Well, the first very obvious one, but still rather fresh in game development, electroencephalography is a technique used by many researchers and software development companies to determine the impact of their product on the electromagnetic waves in a person's brain. Now, while you may automatically imagine these devices as being crazy expensive, within the lower price range, you can actually get fairly functional Bluetooth controlled devices which are placed on the subject's head and offer you continuous readings throughout the experience to determine the emotional responses and the impact that your product is having on the customer. Now, of course, if you're really good at this, you can even use this technology 
to build self-adapting games that change their difficulty or their approach based on the responses from the player, but obviously this technology is still rather new and you also have to think of how easy it would be to acquire this kind of technology for the customer for home use. Furthermore, and specifically often used for testing horror games or horror media, simple heart rate measurement is a fairly reliable method for estimating fear level in subjects by measuring their heart rate. You will usually get a measure before, during and after the experience, which can then present you with a graph or a percentage increase. Now, If you do this properly and you get good ground-based information for testing your game, you can then measure how well it's performing based on the percentage of heart rate increase in your subject. Just as an example, according to published research online which looked at the fear difference between horror in VR and on console, the average increase in heart rate between Calm State and Resident Evil 7 VR experience was about 10.32%. Obviously there are also downsides to this method as it can be influenced by outside factors such as subject taking medication, subject having heart conditions or just the pure stress of the examination. And the final interesting way I want to discuss is the galvanic skin response testing. Now this is a biometric measurement technique that is often used by game developers or movie makers to measure the stress level in their audience. You will usually take measurements before and after the experience, which concentrate on detecting levels of moisture in person's skin, and based on that, the level of conductivity, which is an indirect reaction to a level of stress. Now, these levels can't directly be controlled by the participant, hence providing a somewhat honest result. However, it can obviously be still influenced by conditions such as air moisture, overall room temperature, or any medication taken by the subject. And as an interesting fact, one of the more well-known projects that has used this technique when testing with their playtesters was Until Dawn. So to kind of wrap this up, there are obviously many reasons why you'd want to test your game and the performance and impact it's having on your audience both during development and after it has been released. If you're in the process of developing and you have something that can already be tested, there are multiple options for you such as the EEG measurement, heart rate or any other biometric measurements, including the galvanic skin response. And once your game has been released, you should and most likely will set up a range of KPIs or key performance indicators which will be used to track how well your game is doing out there. And especially if you're a company that plans doing multiple releases, you're gonna be able to learn quite a few things about your marketing campaign and how to advance in the future with new products. Just as a final tip, before releasing the game there are several metrics that you might just build into it and especially if it's connected to the internet, this data might be provided to you live and very fresh, giving you an exact idea of how the player base is doing at that moment of time. But if this is not really an option or if simply your development period does not allow for this kind of implementation, there are several tools out there, such as for example the game analytics platform, which can help you for free, might I add, track stats of your game after the release to quite a great detail. Anyways, that was all I had to say in the topic. I hope you guys found this video interesting and you learned something new, even though it may have not been as exciting as the usual game design or level design stuff that we talk about here on the channel. If you liked it, maybe consider leaving a comment, liking or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. I want to wish you all a bit of rest off today, and I'm going to see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.